Code camp, JavaScript algos and data structures. We're in the ES6 course on challenge 28 of 29. So just two more to go, one more after this. So we're going to handle a fulfilled promise with then. So in the previous two lessons, we created a basic JavaScript promise, and then we completed that promise by adding the resolve and reject methods within the promise body. So it would actually resolve or reject. It would actually fulfill or fail. Okay, so now we're going to handle a fulfilled promise with the dot then method. Okay, so once we make this code, okay, so this is actually the exact same code that we got from the last example. So we're going to essentially get the data out of this. So the whole idea of this was we were making a server request. We had to use a promise because it was asynchronous, right? We had to send a request to a server, wait for a response, and we don't know if that request was successful or not, right? When we sent it off, it could have, it could be a success. We could get data back from it, or there could have been an error and it could fail out. So that's why we use a promise because we have to wait for that response from the server. So whatever this response is, again, this is a, this is the sandbox part of free code camp where we're just pretending to get a response. Based on that response, if response from server is true, we resolve. If it was an error of some type, we could reject. Okay. So now what we we're at the point where we got our response from the server. If it was successful, we resolved. How do we actually get the data that we resolved? So in the last lesson we talked about when we resolve, we would normally pass this. We got the data. Normally this would be data. We wouldn't just pass a string here. We would pass a variable that it was an actual object of data, right? It would actually be the data that we got back from whatever server request we just made. If it was a reject, right, it would be the error we got back from the server. It wouldn't just be a string. It would be an object with a bunch of data in it, a bunch of properties about the error or the data itself. So what we're going to do now is actually use these this dot then method to actually get the result to get whatever we resolve out of a promise. Okay, so let's read through this example and see if we can get a better idea of what's going on because I don't think I did a great job of explaining that. So promises are most useful when you have a process that takes an unknown amount of time in your code, i.e. something asynchronous, right? So a server request, for example. When you make a server request, it takes some amount of time and after it completes, you usually want to do something with the response from the server, right? So we're making a, a request to the server for a reason. We're trying to get data from the server, get something back from the server, so we can actually do something with that. This can be achieved by using the then method. The then method is executed immediately after your promise is fulfilled with a resolve. So again, in the last lessons we learned, resolve is the success, right? If it's successful, if we do get our data from the server, we resolve and we pass it the data. In this case, we just say, we got the data. If it's rejected, we have to use a different method, not a then. Then accounts for what happens if it resolves, okay? That's the key. So assuming the promise goes successfully and we resolve, what happens after? this resolve method and the answer is the dot then method so here's the promise make server request equals new promise all of this they take that that's my promise and say dot then result callback and then a code block okay so result comes from the argument given to the resolve method so that's the key to understand here right we talked about what in resolve we would normally pass it the data we actually got from the server. We wouldn't just pass it this string, just a string saying we got the data, right? We were the whole point of a server request is to get data out of a server and into our code. So we would pass it the data here. So in this example of this server request, this promise, when we resolve, like in this case, result, this result variable, that is equal to this string, this we got the data right so whatever you pass to the resolve gets set as a parameter in your dot then okay so dot then is a method that takes as you can see here a callback function and whatever you want to do with that data whatever you passed in here you have to do within this code block right so then take the data call back and now you have access to the data so in this case, we want to use result as our parameter of the callback and log the result to council. Okay, so we're going to demonstrate this that result 
is exactly what we pass to the resolve. So in this case, result is equal to the string, we got the data. So how do we do this in this example? Well, we can just take the variable, whatever the variable is that is a promise. So in this case, make server request is equal to a new promise. And that promise callback is all of this. Make server request is our promise. So we can say, this is what we want to have happen within the promise, within the asynchronous action. After all of that, after the server request and everything, assuming it's successful, we want to make the server request. So let me just add a space here. Make server request dot then. So do this. Then after that, which is a method again, so we need the parentheses because it's a method, it's a built-in function. Then whatever we what, whatever variable we put here, again, is the result, is the actual data that was passed into the resolve. So in this case, they want us to call it result, use result as the parameter, but result is arbitrary. We can call it anything we want. So in this case, let's call it result, just to make free code camp happy, callback, and then open the callback up with the curly braces. And now we can just type in like a code block, right? So now I can say console.log and let's see what result is. So from the server request promise, then after it, we take our result of that and we console log the result. This is the callback of an anonymous arrow function where we're actually defining result as a parameter. And this is the code block of the callback function where we actually can access the value of result. Okay, so you can see in the terminal here at the bottom, we got the data. That's because I console logged result. So if I change result here and I say anything, because once again, this is where we're naming the variable, the parameter, and then we're calling back, and now we're actually accessing the variable anything, which is the same thing, right? And that's, we got the data because that's what we passed to the resolve. So if I cut this and say, this is anything you can see this is anything here so whatever is passed into the resolve you get back in the callback of the dot then method and that's where you actually can access it so that's this is really kind of the sum summation of promises from the last three examples right you make the variable assigned to a new promise you do your asynchronous action here and then after the asynchronous action if it's successful, you resolve and pass that the data. If not, you reject and pass that the error. Then when you actually call it, you say, okay, make server request dot then. So after that request, take whatever you get back, whatever it resolved and console log it. In this case, we're calling it anything, but as we know, it wants us to call it result. And then we just want to console log result Normally here, instead of console logging, you would, you know, assign it to a variable and then you can map it or display it on your page because normally it's some type of data that you actually want to display. So you would now have access to it in whatever variable you assign here. Okay, so now let's set this one back to what it was originally, which was we got the data. And now if we submit this, this should pass. There we go. It passed because all we did was say, after the server request, after this promise, once it goes through, once it resolves, once this happens, then take the result, whatever got passed into the resolve, and console log it. And we did that. So that's all we had to do for this one. I uh, hope that helps. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I will do my absolute best to get back to each and every one of you. In the next lesson, we're going to account for if the promise fails, but that was really the whole idea of promises is you do some asynchronous action, you resolve if it's a success, you reject if it's a fail, and then you use a dot then method to actually extract the data from the resolve. Okay, hope that helped. See you guys in the next lesson.